Happy birthday to me. Now, this was taken when I was celebrating my 21st birthday, right? So that's my parents, and they're welcoming their newborn endangered species. <laughs> I was fresh in my environmental journalism class when I said to myself, this is how I'm going to remember my 21-year-old self. So it was 15 years ago when, we f when I felt this um, very, um, a very radical emergence of my self-directed pathway to being an environmental activist. And so on the day of my birthday, I decided to take risk. As they say, the greatest risk is not taking one. Together with my small group of friends, we decided to start the first widely public art performance activism in the university town of Dumaguete. Imagine for a moment, Negros Island, lush forest, healthy, clean air and water, not until the late 1800s. So slowly, ever slowly, at first, and then rapidly, poof, only three to four percent primary forest cover left on the island of Negros. That's me walking around the city, and that's the lake. Beautiful, serene, lush, home to endemic uh, fauna and flora, also a very, very critical watershed ecosystem for the surrounding um, towns that's getting their water from it. And then, unfortunately, the former congressman decided to, hmm, sure, explore and exploit the more than 5,000 hectares of the 8,000 hectares land area of the Balinsa Sayao Twin Lakes Natural Park. And so, interestingly, the imminent danger of the bill was left unnoticed by the public to begin with. Yet somehow, our circle of friends decided to do something about it. The moment we learned about it, we thought, okay, what can we do about it? So my instantaneous idea was to decide and organize a nonviolent direct action protest performance art. Originally to paint myself white and naked, but when I shared this to, my, to one of my professors, she was appalled and yet very supportive and said, okay, do it, as long as you wear your briefs, just like the Superman, you know? So I did, and then I asked my friends to join me. I said, hey, would you like to join me? And obviously the look of their faces was like, no, I'm not joining. <laughs> and yet it's the same friends who supported me, walked along with me, and obviously became my security force. So that's around Dumaguete City. It's the first time they saw this white, long-haired guy. And along the way, my friends also started asking people to sign an petition paper, which was backed by scientific research and also support from Dr. Angel C. Alcala, now the national scientist of the Philippines. And this is prior to Facebook clicktivism. This is very important picture for myself. It's the daughter of my friend who is like probably a month old. And I placed it on my wrist because it's a, um, it's, it, it's, her presence is very important for this campaign. It's, it's shown us that intergenerational is um, at hand in terms of putting together what we can offer in terms of really supporting this campaign. So I know that some of you are in the audience right now, and I truly honor your commitment and support of bringing light to the issue back in, the, back in 2004. So 
I believe that our responsibility as human beings is, again, intergenerational because we are simply interconnected, defined by the amount of respect that we receive and we give with our fellow human beings and the great nature of creation. As I walked around the city, people were stunned to see white, a white-painted, long-haired guy in briefs. For me, I represented a blank future, sort of like a metaphor of a blank canvas. And so I asked people to sign my book. And, um, you know, as a sign of a pledge that they are supporting the campaign. The news um, trailed along, you know, a newspaper pick, picked it up, and eventually, the information rippled across the city, and then weeks later, it became a talk among groups in different parts of the country as, it, as, as the force of support snowballed in palpable strength. So, being labeled an eco-artivist, I use creativity as a channel to activate concepts and, 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 and strategies to respond and address to particular environmental or social concerns, and this by way through the act of Artivism. Artivism, according to playwright activist and author of The Vagina Monologues, Eve Ensler, artivism is where edges are pushed, imagination is freed, and a new language emerges altogether. For me, artivism is simply a convergence of art and social responsibility, where transformation happens with a unification um, unifying actions when people get together in the purpose of alleviating the dysfunction of human consciousness in relation to the ideals of a harmonious existence of humanity in the realm of the natural creation. Artivism has a playful approach to it, at times entertaining, yet somehow it brings about curiosity and wonderment, both very important uh, to facilitate spark of um, possibilities and enhances diverse public discussions. It's nonviolent, direct actions in the forms of public art mural, song, poetry, theater, films, among many other ways of um, conveying the transfor transformative message of peace, truth, and justice. Artivism can happen through our inner contemplative works as well, through the practice of mindfulness and meditation and creativity as a healing therapy. From the wise words of my mentor uh, for environmental policy, Dr. Ben S. Malayang III, he stated that environmental problems are emotional. Environmental solutions are technical. But, environmental decisions are political. Environmental problems are emotional because um, in, my, in my experience, uh, walking around the city painted in white, it actually came from frustration. Frustration because I was in an environmental journalism class that time and we were not talking about this very important local concern. So, emotion triggered um, this sense of rage and bewilderment, which eventually found a channel, an energy to bring about change. When I allowed the movement of art to surge through me, the art spirit was whispering, let's get naked, let's take the truth out. Environmental solutions are technical, and this is where uh, my biology friends came Researchers, researchers, scientists, all put in their uh, data and, um, and, 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 and you know, like knowledge about this, this issue, especially um, to save the Twin Lakes of Balinsa Sayao. And that's why it pays to listen to visionaries who care about our planet and to remember that making sound an effective solution is very intergenerational. Environmental decisions are political. In the course of the campaign, the former congressman met with me and our group. Once he came to my place and asked me to stop protesting. And ironically, we live across each other. Second, 
he came to us when we were camping by the lake at you know by the lake in the mountain and again asked to stop doing this protest and I said you know we are not rarahing here we are just being at peace in nature my friend no I didn't say that I wish I did <laughs> but it didn't stop us it didn't stop us to bring light to the issue as the months passed and progressed the campaign uh, took a life of its own we found out that the bill died a natural death because it became a living consciousness in the hearts of students scientists um, and local leaders and even congressmen and at time and sometime later I found out that the congressman himself was enlightened he shifted awareness and committed to help protect the late it's the most challenging when nature becomes a an argument in politics and it takes a conscious heart centered compassionate leader to carry on the vision of a healthy ecology and sustainable living practice oops sorry our young positive deviant spirit moved us to do what we need to do we continued pursuing momentum of guerrilla art type campaigns of performance art in this, performance art in the city and then my engagement um, moved further out of the island when i was 22 years old i got accepted to be part of the international youth delegation for the 11th conference of parties of the united nations framework for uh, climate change in montreal canada and when i was there i asked myself as a young 22 year old climate activist i asked myself what can i do in this um huge meeting well as part of our daily activities we were lobbying and um you know attending plenary sessions but then one day i was at coffee shop and i was reading this newspaper i saw the photo of yuko ono and it was december 7 and it stated there that december 8th is the death anniversary of john lennon and they happened to be in montreal in 1969 doing this bed, bed in for peace protest in one of the hotels so i asked my friends okay maybe we can do this in the hall of the un session so we planned to we eventually had this um, um singing inside the hall you know singing give climate a chance and imagine and eventually it it caught the lenses of the media and it was in the international news new york times bbc cnn again the power of nonviolent direct action through creative ingenuity has propelled the intention of the campaign to great visibility and in 2007 i attended another un conference in bali and this time i was part of the greenpeace solar generation delegation and one of the great and one of the creative stunts we did was of me dressed in a polar bear costume under the heat of the Bali sun at the opening of the conference. It was also when I was asked to um, hand in the petition to former U.S. President Al Gore and climate reality leader as well. So that was me inside that costume of the polar bear. <laughs> Many types of activism campaigns have adopted creative forms of nonviolent direct action protests because it magnifies the boldness of the message. And in the present day, in the, in the present day clicktivism, it has become a playing field for cy cyber crazy campaigns. It was also in this trip that I met my artistic collaborator and my partner, L. Divine. We met in the plane on the way to Bali. We've journeyed since then. Um, and eventually, we continued on with our work. And together, I continue become, to become an environmental um, artist and educator and yet I rediscover a resonant understanding of sacred ecology and I'd like to play um, these three words with you oops that's me and you now you start the word scared how do you feel about it I realized that the word scared has the same letters with the words with the word sacred and this is where I feel that when we get scared, yet we come into the space of sacred field of experience, something happens um, that enlightens our beingness. And one of the, activity, uh, one of the activities that I had experience with was when I was in Tacloban City. I was with an organization called Spark Philippines. 
and um, you know, like part of the part of the the the, the activity was to hold space for um, um, health workers and teachers, and one of one of the things that that I did was um, creating a breathing meditation and um, sound and and movement workshop, which eventually became um, an, an, an activation in themselves to feel that there is still support um, for them in terms in, 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 you know, in the space of being scared after the typhoon. It was humbling to see how they surrendered in deep vulnerability and yet expressing so much delight in participating, crying together, laughing together as a community. I also did another workshop with um, the high school students, 400 of them, and uh, I called it From Junk to Funk, where I requested students to gather debris and turn them into uh, sculptural upcycled objects. And one of, the, one of the students, you know, made this chandelier, and for her, it's like a, uh, a symbol of hope. You know, because you place a chandelier, chandelier on the ceiling and there's light. And then another kid made this boat because um, his father lost um, his boat for livelihood. So again, um, it's a sense of connecting with them that I feel my activism has become more and more, you know, heart-centered and... Um, people engaging. So this is when we did the, uh, you know, um, heart to heart insight meditation where all of them, you know, just shared energies together and eventually really felt um, support from each other. The next word is this words. Have you ever thought that the words heart and earth share the same letters. And I'm curious if you would agree that the heart of the earth is love. We encounter love in many levels, and in the work that we do, love is important indicator that moves us to do what we need to do. Together with my friends, we have started a nonprofit called Gugmagaya, simply translate, translated as love for the earth. Still at its infancy, um, and yet, with the work that we do, focusing on environmental education and utilizing creative holistic learning approaches, we highlight local initiatives and celebrating local champions in nature conservation. And such as the work of Tata Ete Vindiola, he's a hunter turned conservationist and a forest wisdom keeper who has championed the reintroduction of planting endemic trees um, for reforestation on the island of Negros and the neighboring regions of the country. He is an awardee for forest conservation and owns a, uh, a sanctuary called Liptong Woodland, a living laboratory um, at the foothills of Mount Talinis. So these are you know, things that we do for Gugmagaya, and we do mural paintings and um, workshop for students as well. And Lastly, I'd like to share the word silent and listen. Again, they share the same characters, and yet I know that when there's the willingness to hear, there's also the willingness to share. And it's when we are in our deepest silence that we feel fully aligned and centered with our own true self. One thing um, that I realize is that a lot of insights happen when we come into silence. And I really believe that it's in that kind of spaciousness that conscious communication happens, which illuminates the desire to extend the good, the sacred, and the beautiful. I lived in Ubud Valley for some time, and I do performance art, and it's also because it's influenced by the island. It's very spiritual. And you know, at times I'd go by the river and literally listen to rock music. So that's me with the headphones plugged onto the rock. You may also, you know, um, start, you know, 
practicing all of these things because at the end of the day, um, it's really that sense of inner peace that can bring about change um, in what we do and especially our great connection for the environment. We live in a fast-paced world in a moment where possibilities seem to be more endless as ever. Technological advancement are picking up and unfortunately, war is still a big business. And that the earth seems to suffer as what it's being portrayed. But no, the earth itself is a living consciousness. It is shifting, it is giving warning signs it is unforgiving, yet it remains a life-giving force for all. So, I continue to pledge to be part of the counterforce that contributes to the awakening of humanity. And I take courage and renew the sense, my sense of perspective, passion, and purpose. Through the spirit of compassion, we can support each other uh, in cultivating contemplative and environmental practices by going for walks to the forest, go with your friends, you know, bathe in the river, swim, um, talk to the elderly as well, your lola, your lolo, um, thank your parents as well, and eventually be mindful of our um, daily choices and opt for minimal carbon footprint. I actually tried working in a cubicle, but my mind drift was drifting to the ocean, and so I followed the wave and volunteered for a humpback whale research in the Northern Islands of the Philippines where I experienced swimming and hearing the, song, the, the, hearing the songs of the humpback whales as the current of the sound vibration passed through my body. As you see, I'm here for the long haul, not just for the short ride. And I can almost hear the train of the rhyming words, walk, the talk. I'm doing my best. It was never easy. Still never easy. It's challenging. And there are moments when I almost had to exit and cut my hair and don't care. But there's a reel that's fishing me back to this life's mission. I have committed to the mission of creating a, an intentional community where it's a safe space for truth telling and a hub to support the activation of awakened consciousness for peace and ecological sustainability. Elle and I, together with our heart friends, have taken the leap to create this sanctuary a space where it will integrate three pillars, creative awakening, sacred ecology, and spiritual vitality, with the intention to help heighten the awareness of one's compassion for humanity and the planet. As Dalai Lama puts it, compassion is the radicalism of our time. I remain faithful in my art, and art will continue to be part of activism. Art will continue to advance enlightened ecological consciousness. Art will always reveal the future ahead of us. Thank you.